Good morning, welcome to Walking in Love. I'm Melissa Whitkey, thanks for joining me today. I wanna continue what I started on my last message, which are practical steps for walking forward on this path with God. A lot of people have been listening to my messages and have felt encouraged, but they have asked, well, what do I do next? How do I find the will of God for my life? How do I know what his plan is for me? Where do I start? So I wanna continue the practical steps that we need to take each day. But everything I'm gonna talk about is gonna build on these three steps that I believe we need to do to have the life that God, or Jesus died on the cross for us to have, the, the, the plan that God has for our life. To have this plan, you're gonna to need to do three things. And, I'm going to, and every message I preach stands on these three steps. Number one, you have to surrender to God. You have to accept God. You have to believe. Obviously, you have to believe in God. So you have to say yes to God. Welcome Jesus into your heart. Step two is to believe that God has a plan for your life and he's given you everything you need to fulfill that plan. You're destined to do great things on this planet. You're destined to help other people. You need to know that, accept it, believe it. And then you've got to find that, you've got to find God's will for your life. We're going to talk a lot more about that because that's really important. A lot of people say to me, I don't know what God has planned for me, but I think you do. So we're going to talk a lot more about that. And step three, then you're going to take the gifts that God has given you and you're going to use them out in the world with love. It's so simple. There are three easy steps, yet most people don't do it. Most people are never going to achieve their destined plan that God had for them. Why is that? Because God is a gentleman. <laughs> Let's put it this way. God gave you free will for a reason. He gave you free will for one reason, to choose him or not. Are you going to choose God's plan for your life, which is a plan that's amazing, beyond anything you can think, hope, or imagine? God's plan for your life is abundant. It's a plan. It's a big plan. We oftentimes limit God by our thinking, our small thinking. Even when we think we have a big you know, dream, God's plan is so much more beyond that and more abundant than that than we can ever imagine. I'm just starting to learn some of these principles starting to see some things change in my life, things that are shifting in a way that I never thought would happen. And it's simply by reading this word, <laughs> internalizing it, letting it change you. That's the thing that we have to understand. God doesn't want to change your circumstances as much as God wants to change you. And that's hard for us, right? We're living in this earthly world. And when we're living in circumstances that are uncomfortable or circumstances that are hard or things that are, you know, we're in pain or we're sad or we're depressed or there's so many things that can come against us in this world, what we pray for God to do is to change our circumstances. But we'll, and, if, and, and oftentimes he does. There are certainly times where he's going to change your circumstances. But more than that, he wants to change you. He wants those circumstances to get you to learn a lesson, to get you to turn to him, to get you to to grow and to maybe shed something that's holding you back and learn something that you need to move forward. This is a path with God. This is not like something we do once and then stop. This is not something where we say yes to God and then it's over and everything miraculously, you know, changes in our life for good. It doesn't happen that way. I told you I've been walking with God seriously for nine years now. Did everything change miraculously overnight? No, but what he has done, so many blessings, so many miracles in my life, but what mostly he's done is to change me, to make me a person that will be able to achieve the things that he wants me to achieve. Remember, life is a journey, right? It's, it, we're here for a certain amount of time that's predetermined by God, but we have to decide to walk on that path with love. We have to be willing to do the hard work Walking with God is hard work. Sometimes I think siding with the world is so much easier, but walking in love towards what we believe God is calling us to is hard work. So are you ready to work hard? If the answer is no, then you're not going to be on God's path for long because he's going to challenge you. You have to grow. You have to shed some things that have been holding you back. The things that he's changed in me are miraculous. It, it, it's amazing the difference of, in who I am today than when I started. For me, the biggest thing probably that held me back is the thing I'm using most now is my mouth. Oh my goodness, there's so many scriptures about no man can tame the tongue. David asked that God put a watch over his mouth lest, lest he sin against him. Any, anyone who is, is very 
strong-willed or type A probably personality, or I don't know, however you want to describe me, my mouth has been the thing that gets me in the trouble the most. So what God had to do was, and, and this is where I've talked about it in other, in other um, messages, is where we can use the gifts that God has given us against his plan for our life, as I was doing with my mouth. I would say anything that came into my heart, right? Or in my mind, hopefully not my heart, in my mind, right? So I would be quick to argue. I would use my ability. I also think very quickly. I would use that to, to win fights with my husband and to win fights with other people, to be right, which is ridiculous. That's not what God called us to do. God called us to love each other. So I would use the gift of my ability to speak quickly and think quickly in a way that God didn't intend for me to use it. So that's something we have to be careful about too. You have to use your gifts in love. So it took many years, not many minutes, not many hours, but many years for God to work with me over and over again to change the way I used my words, my mouth. And it's crazy when I look back and I say, it's been years. I used to yell a lot. I used to argue with people a lot. I used to argue until I won because I, you know, again, I could think quickly and I could speak quickly. And that was so unfair to use my, a gift that God had given me in a way to harm other people. And that's what I was doing. That's just one way that God's changed me. And there's been many, many, many ways. Remember, Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branch, and my father is the vine dresser. What does the vine dresser do? He prunes. He, he cuts off things that are not bearing fruit in order for the plant to bear more fruit. So God's going, if, when you surrender to God, get ready because it's going to be a journey. But it's going to be a journey for good. In order to achieve what God wants you to achieve, you need to be the person that can handle that level of success. That's something that has taken me a long time to learn, right? Because we want everything yesterday. We live in a society where we have technology that is, you know, is crazy fast, right? I've worked in, in information technology all of my career, 30 years. So I understand where technology, where it was when I got in to where it is now. It's incredible the transformation we've made with technology. It doesn't work that way <laughs> with God's plan. It's going to take time. Maybe you're going to change faster than I did. I had some things that God had to work through my life that took a long time. It took me a long time. Hopefully, you're going to learn, based on what I'm trying to do to encourage you, you're going to learn faster. Listen to what God is prompting you to do. Be more obedient. Open to let him change you. He wants to change you for good. If you want to achieve the plan that God has for your life, you need to allow him to change you into the person who can handle that success, to be what he wants you to be, to be a light in this dark world. If there was ever a time where this world needs light, it is now in 2020. I can't even believe what I'm seeing in this world. But I refuse to side with this world. To be carnally minded, the Bible says, is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. What do you want? I want life and peace. I am not siding with this world. I am siding with God. I had an experience yesterday. I went, I've been having lower back problem for quite a while now. I've done a lot of things to, to help it and change it. And I went to a doctor yesterday. And one of the things that she said to me that I refuse to accept, she says, you know, Melissa, I see some arthritis in your lower spine. And she said, um, pretty much everyone who lives for any period of time is going to get arthritis. Well, I don't accept that in my body. I reject that in the name of Jesus Christ. You can laugh at me, you can say all you want. There are countless examples in the Bible of Jesus healing people based on their belief in him, their faith in him. And I'm standing on that. And that's what we all need to do. I know a lot of people are dealing with health concerns. A lot of people are dealing with cancer and illnesses and immune system um, diseases and so many challenges in this world. We need to stand on the scriptures of Jesus Christ to help us. Anyway, we're going to talk a lot more about that. If you, by the way, if you are dealing with health concerns, I encourage you to go to Andrew Womack's website. It's www.awmi.net and look at his healing journey stories. He has captured um, stories of people who have been miraculously healed by the word of God, where the doctor said there was no hope. And they've been miraculously healed because they stood on the scriptures of Jesus Christ. The word of God has power. Again, our bodies are not earthly. Our bodies are spiritual. 
So you were made by Almighty God. You're Jesus. When Jesus died on that cross, if you look, you know, this is I'm changing my message here, but maybe someone needs to hear this. If you go to Isaiah 53, 5, it says, By Jesus' stripes, we are healed. Not we will be, not we could be, but we are healed. Jesus died and took disease with him. He took illness with him. We have to rebuke illness that comes into our body. We have to stand on what the Word of God says. And there's so many healing scriptures. Go to Andrew Womack. Listen to the healing journeys of these people. So many people, the doctor said, your, your spouse isn't going to make it. Your child isn't going to make it. There's nothing we can do. Well, when, when the doctors give up, and believe me, I totally believe in medical science. Use that, but stand on the word of God. Believe not in the carnal mind. Believe in the spiritual. Believe not just what doctors say. Let the doctors help you. Take whatever treatments that you feel you know, called to, to, to have, but also turn to God. God created you, and he can heal you. Anyway, I kind of got off track, but I want to just qu quickly get back on, and I'm going to finish for today. I don't want to let these messages go too long because I want you to come back tomorrow. So, um, but I want to talk about this thing about being born again. I have to say, before I really started reading the Bible, when people talked about, I'm a born again Christian. Do you remember that? It had this really negative connotation. What do you mean born again? It just had this like, I don't know, uh, crazy kind of. I don't even know what it just it had a negative connotation right it just was not something what do you mean born again like I, I'm you know oh goodness of course I believe in Jesus but born again turn to John chapter 3 where Jesus says and he's talking to one of the Pharisees and I'm not going to read read too much of this but read John chapter 3 read the gospel of John in total it's beautiful but in 3 3 Jesus answered him he's talking to Nicodemus who was a Pharisee remember the Pharisees were they believed in the law they didn't believe in what Jesus was doing they were the ones who wanted to see Jesus you know taken out <laughs> really because they because he was like ruining what they were saying right he, they were people were following Jesus and they were like they're not following us anymore that's why the Pharisees didn't believe in Jesus and they didn't trust him and they didn't want to hear about him they just wanted to get rid of him right Jesus answered him, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you that unless a person is born again, anew from above, he cannot ever see, know, be acquainted with, and experience the kingdom of God. What was Jesus saying? The scriptures throughout the Bible which talk about being transformed by the renewing of your mind. When you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, which is step one, turn, say yes to God, receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're renewed. Jesus comes to live in you. You receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that changes you. You need to be, be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. When you receive Jesus as your Lord, your mind will get renewed. You will become a new creature in him. I want to quickly turn to Ephesians 2.10. This is a scripture I stand on all the time because this, this tells us why we feel like we're here for a reason. It's something that I felt most of my life. I've talked about this in so many of my videos I felt that I was here for a reason. I knew I was here for a reason and I couldn't find it. I never could figure out what it was. I searched by listening to other people's videos and stories and reading books and autobiographies because I thought I'd find it through their journey. But what I didn't understand was what I needed to turn to God because my journey is between me and him. It's not between me and the world. It's between me and him. Ephesians 2.10 says this, For we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, recreated, not just created, we're recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand, before we even got here, he had a plan for you, for us taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made, re made ready for us to live. We're recreated in Christ Jesus. We're born anew to do what God put us here to do. What does this mean? It means we have a free will. We are put on this planet to do God's work, but he doesn't want a bunch of slaves running around. He wants people who want to honor him, who want to take what he died for us on that cross to have and fulfill his plan for our life. Why would you want to fulfill God's plan for your life? Hey, I'm, you could be saying, I'm doing okay. I, my life is, is good. I'm, you know, I'm making good money. And I'm, you know, I've got a good life. I'm... Because God's plan for your life will far exceed anything you could ever hope, think, or imagine. The goodness of God is beyond anything that we could conceive. 
Again, when I talked about Andrew Womack, I'm listening to a series right now that he has called Don't Limit God. If you go on his website, you can start listening it too. It's probably about um, six, six or more hours. Um, amazing. Andrew talks about the ways that we limit God. We limit his plan for our life. And Andrew was talking about it today. He was talking about a time where he, his ministry was more successful than it had ever been before. And God said to him, Andrew, you're limiting me. We limit God by our small thinking. We limit God by so many, in so many different ways. And we'll talk about that in another series. It's not, it's not for my message today. But if you want to read about not limiting God, go to Andrew Womack's website. It's amazing. It's great. He'll bring to life things that you probably never thought of. Remember, God has a plan for us. What did Jesus say in John 10, 10? Remember, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. He doesn't want you to hear me. He doesn't want you to fulfill your destiny. He doesn't even want you to put one foot on God's path ever. He is coming here to steal, to kill, and destroy. He wants to keep you and separate you from God. Understand that. If you don't understand you have an enemy, look around. This world is so broken. We have an enemy who is corrupting people every day. If you don't side with God, you're, by default, you're siding with Satan, who is the enemy of this world. That's another message for another day. Know that. But what did Jesus say in John 10, 10? He said, I came that you might have and enjoy your life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. Does that sound like a small plan for your life? Does that sound like it's supposed to be a just get by, kind of drag through the days kind of plan for your life? Heck no. <laughs> it is supposed to be a... a a plan that gets you excited every day, that you wake up and with this knowing that you have to do this. If you don't, it's almost like if you don't do it, you don't want, you, like, there, you have to do it. Like, there's nothing can stop you. You know, wild horses couldn't drag you away from your purpose when you figure out what that is. I want to make a, I want to say something else that is probably not a very popular thing. So many people say, I don't know what God's plan is for my life. I don't know what his will is for my life. Yes, you do. <laughs> the same way I did. The problem today is we're not taught this. We're not taught that that inner voice that we feel in our hearts, that inner knowing that's calling to us is God. I wasn't taught that. I hope you were taught that. I was not taught that. I always knew I was supposed to do something. I didn't know what it was. I always felt like I was supposed to do something great in this world. Never knew what it was. No one ever said to me, do you have a little voice inside of you that's kind of calling you, that's kind of saying, hey, I like, I really like when I do this. I really like, you know, in my case, I like teaching people. I like getting up in front of people and, and talking about and teaching them things. I love writing. I love, most importantly, I love writing inspirational writing, which is probably what I do the best, obviously. This is where I believe I'm meant to be. You know what your calling is. The problem what we do so often is we cover it up with a bunch of other stuff. I was going to name my first book, Your, Your uh, Midlife Crisis is Preplanned, because that's kind of what happened to me. I got to mid middle of life and had somewhat of a crisis, and thank God, God woke me up and said, the reason why you're feeling this way is because you've gotten to this middle point of your life and you still have not started walking on my path. And I'm continuously calling you, continuously calling you, continuously calling you, but you're doing everything else but hearing me. If you don't start fulfilling that purpose in your life, you're going to be really uncomfortable because God never stops calling us. God's plan for our life is what we're here for. But when you start listening, when you start tuning in to what he has to say to you, you are going to get so excited. It's a passion that speaks for you. People will start feeling your energy shift. They're going to be start looking at you and saying, what did they have? What happened to them? It's, it's a shift because all of a sudden you're on purpose. All of a sudden you are walking on his path. All of a sudden you're saying and doing things. And I'm not just talking about preaching the word of God. I'm, we all are supposed to be a light in this dark world, but you're going to impact the world the most by what God called you to do. If you're supposed to be an inventor, if you're supposed to be a teacher, if you're supposed to be a police officer and protect people, if you're supposed to be a, a politician, and you can do that with love, by the way, because I don't see a lot of that happening today. If you want to help people, you want to be a doctor, a nurse, you know, a, you know, anything you do, you can be an office worker, you can be helping a company achieve its, its goals. It doesn't matter as long as it's what God put in your heart for you to do. I encourage you to walk this journey with me, to walk in love. 
I changed the title of this series because I realize that that is what each one of us are supposed to do every single day of our lives. I hope you'll join me on my next message. So again, the message of today is to be born, turn your life over to God, be born again. It's beautiful because when we're born again, by the way, you take off the old, give that to God, and you take on the new code of righteousness. You become right with God when you become born again. It is so beautiful. Who wouldn't want to trade all the junk, all the, all that's wrong with our lives, and give that back and, and start again? That's really what God is offering you by being born again. It's amazing. Who wouldn't want that? I wish someone had, had made me understand this at a much younger age. I'm 54 years old, and I'm finally just really starting out on my path, and I'm so excited. And so, you know, I feel like I'm a 20-year-old. I talked to my son on, on the phone, and he's so excited about the things he's doing, and so am I. And so I feel like I feel like I'm 20 again. So I want you to feel this too. I want you to be excited. I want you to take off the old and put on the new. Receive the righteousness of Christ. You know what that feels like? It's kind of like a, a warm blanket on a cold day where you just go, oh, this feels so good. And if you're weary and tired, Jesus said, come to me all who are overburdened and I will give you rest. That's what Jesus will do for you. He will give you peace. Be prepared for some hard lessons because this walk with God isn't easy. But is this walk on this planet easy either? When you walk with God, you have a hedge of protection around you. When you walk with God, you're on purpose. When you walk with God, you're walking in love and you have the ability to help people and change their lives. Isn't that what you want to do? Don't you want to make this planet a better place for your children, for your friends, for your family, for everyone? Isn't that what feels the best? Isn't giving away what you have what feels best? You know, people are so appreciative when we give them things. When we give, you know, words of encouragement, when we give gifts, when we give whatever we have to give when we give it to them. I always, you know, I realized a long time ago that I get more from giving than what the people I'm giving to get. It's a gift for us to give. So understand, the best gifts that we have is what Jesus put inside of your heart. God made you with gifts that the world is crying out for. The world is waiting. The world needs what you have to give. And if you don't give it, then there's going to be a lot of disappointed people in this world, and God's going to have to shift things around. We'll talk about the, the parable of the talents at one point, where the talents, because um, Jesus, if you don't use what God gives you, God's eventually going to put someone else, give it to somebody else to use. So this is not like, you know, you have to do this. You have to start walking and say, God, yes, every day. And you have to say yes to God every day. You have to say, Jesus, walk with me every day, 24 hours a day. This is not about church. This is not about sitting in, in church for, for an hour a week. This is about 24 hours a day, seven days a week, saying yes to God over and over. And I'm telling you, you're going to have an amazing walk with God if you do. You're going to fulfill feel things you've never felt. You're going to achieve things you've never believed you could. You're going to touch people in a way that they need, but you need. So I'm very excited about this, this series because I just want to feel like I want to give you practical steps every day to take. I want you to say yes to Jesus today. I want you to receive him as your Lord and Savior. I want you to take off the old and receive the new. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, right? We win and lose the battle in life first in our minds, right? It's always in our thinking. I'll share one quick lesson from my Kung Fu experience. We have to hold stances in Kung Fu, and sometimes it's a pretty long time that you have to hold them. And my teacher said, I don't care if you collapse to the floor. If you're holding a stance and you can't hold it anymore, you just collapse, because that's when your legs give up. He said, but, but what I don't want to ever see is when you stand up, because that means your mind gave up. You understand the difference? We need to, we win or lose the battle always in our mind first. So today, what I want you to do is say, yes, God, I receive you, Jesus, as my Lord. I, I repent of my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. This is what Joel Osteen always says, and, and I like it. Jesus, I receive you today as my Savior, as my Lord and Savior. Come in, make me whole. I'll follow you. Have the best day. God bless you, and I look forward to the next time.